A morning cup of coffee is so important, but it can definitely affect your blood sugar if you're living with diabetes. In fact, any type of caffeine can affect your blood sugar. Even if there's no sugar in your coffee, that caffeine can still spike your blood sugar wildly. Caffeine is a stimulant, and I think we all kind of imagine that it just enters our bloodstream and tells our brain to have more energy, but that's really not how it works. One of the ways that caffeine gives you energy is by telling your liver to release stored sugar. Did you know that your liver has glucose stored in it? Any excess glucose from your meals gets stored as backup in your muscles and in your liver, and this is called glycogen. When your muscle and glycogen stores are full, the rest of the glucose is stored as body fat. When your body needs more energy, more fuel, Glycogen from your liver is released, converted into glucose, and then enters your bloodstream. If you live with diabetes, that wallop of glucose from your liver can actually really spike your blood sugar. If you live with type one diabetes, it can really actually call for a whole insulin dose as though you just ate a meal. If you live with type two diabetes and you take insulin or you're on other medications to try to keep your blood sugar down, you too can also see a significant spike in your blood sugar from that liver glucose. But there's a good amount of caffeine in Red Bull, diet sodas that claim to have zero calories, right? But they can still affect your blood sugar. Black tea, depending on how sensitive you are to caffeine, a cup of decaf coffee can spike your blood sugar because it's triggering your liver to release stored glucose. So personally, I live with type one diabetes. I am very sensitive to caffeine. I know I can have one cup of black coffee in the morning and it won't spike my blood sugar, but if I have even a cup of decaf in the afternoon, my blood sugar will spike 100 points and stay stubbornly up there for three or four hours. And it's so hard to get it down. So I don't drink any type of coffee or caffeinated beverages in the afternoon. You've also got to keep an eye on all the things you're adding to your coffee. Even a half cup of milk can put eight grams of carbohydrate in your coffee. Those little creamers, those add up. Sure, it's only two grams of carbs per creamer maybe, but when you put five of those in there, guess what? That's 10 grams of carbs and 10 grams of carbs can easily spike your blood sugar. I also personally wanted to get the fake sugars out of my coffee, so I trained my taste buds to like coffee black without anything in it. To simplify all the factors in coffee that could affect blood sugar. And I just didn't wanna keep drinking fake sugars every day. And yes, it did taste like mud for the first month after I removed all sweeteners and creamers and any additives from my coffee. But I retrained my taste buds. Now I love the taste of black coffee. People who take insulin may find they need, you know, for example, one unit of insulin for one cup of coffee. Everyone's tolerance and sensitivity and insulin needs are different. So you have to figure out how much insulin your body needs to cover that cup of coffee. Something else to consider if you have diabetes and you're drinking coffee or any other caffeinated beverages is how much caffeine you're consuming all day long. Some people are drinking coffee or other caffeinated beverages literally all day long. We just talked about the fact that caffeine tells your liver to release stored glucose. So if you're drinking caffeinated beverages all day long to give you energy, guess what's happening? You're producing excess glucose all day long. This means that you're going to be contributing to your blood sugar with that excess glucose all day long, which means you're gonna need more insulin to cover that extra glucose. You might think you're just insulin resistant and you can't figure out why your insulin needs are so high when it might actually be that you are drinking so much caffeine all day long that your body just needs this basically an extra blanket's worth of insulin to keep your blood sugars in your goal range throughout the day. Instead of drinking more caffeine, go for a walk. Nothing gives you more energy than a little fresh air and a break from your computer screen. Another very important thing to remember is that caffeine can actually dehydrate you, causes you to pee more. If you're not drinking enough water and you're drinking a lot of caffeine and especially coffee throughout the day, chances are you're a little dehydrated. The more dehydrated you become as a person with diabetes, the more concentrated the sugar in your bloodstream becomes the higher your blood sugar will be. So you gotta drink more water. <laughs> drink more water to help counteract that caffeine. Drink more water to help stay hydrated. Just because a cup of coffee contains, you know, only five calories, 
doesn't mean it's harmless, doesn't mean you should drink endless amounts of it. Caffeine absolutely has an impact on your sensitivity to insulin, your blood sugar levels. And guess what? If you're taking more insulin to manage all that extra glucose from all that caffeine, telling your liver to release all that glucose, what do you think your body's gonna do with that excess glucose? Insulin stores excess glucose as body fat. Chugging all that extra caffeine all day could be contributing to weight gain, could be making it harder for you to lose weight. I'm not saying coffee is a bad thing. I'm just saying think about how much you're drinking every day because it does have an impact on a whole bunch of things, especially if you live with diabetes. Thanks for watching Diabetes Nerd. You can find my books on Amazon.